Most natural hazards give warning before they strike. Hurricanes, even volcanic eruptions. But predicting when the Earth will quake is like predicting when a temperamental child will erupt. Good luck. Every day is earthquake season, and, and you'll hear people talk about earthquake weather. And people have studied this intensively. There just is no such thing. There's no particular time of year they strike. There's no particular phase of the moon when they strike. None of those things really make a difference for these very large earthquakes. We know energy is going into the system. The one thing that we all wish we could tell is how much energy has it stored. It's like a charging battery. You, you put the leads on and turned it on, and then the little red light is blinking. But we don't have the dial that says how full the charge is. Professor Goldfinger can't foretell the next quake to strike his home, the Pacific Northwest. But he can search for clues in the past. The thing about earthquakes is, if it happened once, it's probably happened a thousand times. Professor Goldfinger looks for a pattern to the Cascadia Fault quakes, but not on land. For years, scientists have been extracting cores of sediment from the seafloor. It's a very quiet environment. Sediment just rains down. It's a very smooth running tape recorder. This section comes from the Megathrust earthquake of 1700. The disturbed sediment was washed off the land during the great quake. There's three to 400 years of material here, and this is the seafloor as it was just a few minutes before the earthquake. It's a dirty record of half a dozen quakes across thousands of years. You can just visually see here's an earthquake, 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 another earthquake, another earthquake. I kind of look at these sort of like barcodes. Magnitude eight earthquakes, still huge occur on average every 240 years. The very largest and most destructive, magnitude nine, show up on average every 500 years. In the last 10,000 years, the Cascadia Fault has produced a megathrust earthquake 19 times. The last time was in 1700, 320 years ago. But the time between huge quakes is erratic anything from 200 to 1,000 years. A major earthquake could hit Portland and Seattle at any time. All the lines of evidence are all converging at the same answer. It's one of the most airtight cases that I've ever seen. Professor Goldfinger knows how bad it could be. Even for Californians uh, like me, an earthquake is typically 15 to 20 seconds. These last can go as long as five minutes, which is just an eternity if you're in one. And in 2011, Professor Goldfinger was. He was in Japan for an earthquake conference when the Mag 9 hit Tohoku. Japan can take a hit like that, and the recent disaster there, you'd have to call a success except for the coastal defenses, which were overwhelmed by too big of a tsunami. Uh, Japan had very little structural damage. 911, what happened? Uh, there's a hell of an earthquake. Structural engineer Reginald DeRoche has also felt devastating quakes firsthand. In October 1989, a magnitude 6.9 quake devastated Loma Prieta in Northern California. Can you feel that? I was in it. I was on a uh, student at the time on Berkeley's campus. From where I was, I could see smoke coming from the Bay Bridge. The quake shook the Bay Bridge and the double-decked Cypress Freeway. Four 
One span collapsed onto the other span for a section of around a mile and trapping people in between the two large sections of the concrete bridge where the majority of the fatalities occurred. 15 seconds. 63 dead. Six billion dollars of damage. Like most of the Pacific Northwest, San Francisco Bay is built largely on solid bedrock through which seismic waves travel fast. But geologists have found large anomalies beneath the populous coast that are something else. The largest is more than 40 miles across. Five miles beneath the surface, the X-ray reveals a huge bowl of hard rock filled to the brim with layers of soft, weak sediments, a sedimentary basin. For the last five years, geophysicist Aaron Wirth has studied how an earthquake would interact with this huge geological feature. Because that material is so weak, when seismic waves enter it, um, the sedimentary material shakes much more than the region surrounding it. Just like this. When seismic waves hit the edge of this basin, waves will get trapped, bounce around, and that contributes to the longer duration and stronger shaking. And that's a colossal problem. Because nearly 200 years ago, settlers built something atop one particular basin. Seattle. How bad could a megaquake be for its 750,000 residents. To find out, Professor Wirth conducts a supercomputer simulation. Seismic waves are hitting Portland, La Grande, and Crescent City. Although Seattle and La Grande are the same distance away from the megathrust fault, you can really see that Seattle is shaking longer and stronger than La Grande. The Loma Prieta earthquake lasted just 15 seconds. If a magnitude 9 quake hits, it will be 125 times bigger. Seattle could shake for more than five minutes. I do think about this place is capable of having earthquakes, but we live here because it's beautiful, because we love it here. But it's a bit of a trade-off, and it's a risk because there's a lot of buildings that are not seismically safe. Some of those are schools, and that does make me nervous, having a daughter. We're in a race, and it's a race that we're going to lose. We already know we're going to lose. It's just a question of how much. 